Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I am Vin Stone, and that is Joel Bryant, and this is a wonderful <laughs> episode. Tree Fitty. That's right, it is the sea monster of Linux Weekly. <laughs> Daily, yeah, Wednesday. sure is. <laughs> That's right. When I realized that Linux podcast was about 20 stories tall with glowing red eyes, and I said, dang it, Trudy, yeah. <laughs> you gave a dollar. Hey, Jill, what's new? Hi. You got anything fun going on? Yeah, actually, so something exciting happened last Wednesday. So after last Wednesday's uh, fun LWW, System76 tweeted this and honored me with their very first hashtag Woman Wednesday. And so, yeah, the, the tweet says using hashtag Woman Wednesday to highlight women in Linux at Jill Linux Girl is core organizer for Linux Chicks Los Angeles, co-host on the LWW weekly podcast, woohoo, host of Destination Linux podcast, community organizer at Linux Gamecast. Learn more about Jill and her Linux pursuits. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, they they got a nice quote for me on um, on the image. And actually, you know what? I should read it because I was pretty proud of this quote. I was going to send up some quotes from uh, Trackmania. <laughs> oh no, Ben! Don't do that. Why? I mean, I haven't don't do that. Quote. I've yeah, never. I haven't cussed, <laughs> but <laughs> no, I get upset a few times, but not cussed. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I I stated on this honor uh, that uh, on the on the um, image it's a picture of me with the System76 logo, and I stated the open source community is not a zero sum game. So ask questions and freely share your knowledge because in Linux all ships rise with the tide. Tide, and remember to keep those penguins marching. So yeah, that was that was. <laughs> a really exciting surprise. And I want to thank uh, System76 and the CEO of System76, Carl Rochelle and Emma and Cheese Bacon and the gang. And of course, thank you to Vin, Jordan and Pedro and all our patrons for choosing me to be a host on LWW more than four and a half years ago, Vin. Don't, don't, Can you don't, believe don't, that? Don't, don't go blaming us for this. It's not Aww, our fault. I'm blaming you, Vin. <laughs> Tried to throw us under the bus. Man. That's right, System 76. I'm going to send you some fun quotes, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm happy for you, Jill. Yeah. I was, that was a nice surprise. <laughs> I got a couple of things I've been playing around with. I got this. I posted this on the Twitter thing. This is StarTech. What is this? This is the newest, hottest technology. Um, not even if it, this is FireWire card. That's what this is. This is a kind nice. of a special one. That I want to do some A/B testing because I typically use a Sibia Fire card, um, FireWire card, mm. and you know modern PCI Express chipsets they just don't have any support for FireWire, rightfully so. And typically, what you'll have on the card is a PCI Express bridge chip. This one doesn't, so I wanted to A/B test that, and uh, main reason I got it so I could go back because I have you know I've updated Jackbox and it's you know, modern-ish system, AM, mm. whatever, 5600G, B550 yeah. chipsets and all That's that. Right. And I redid all of our benchmarks. I've been dying to do this just to get it done. So if you don't know, on linuxteamcast.com, we have a Linux-compatible audio interface thing, and not just FireWare stuff. This is PCI Express, all this. I let you know, and then here's one thing I hate. This is what started me doing this. Somebody's like, hey, does this work under Linux? Guaranteed the next, then the first reply is like, well, I don't own one, but I'm like, get out of here, get out of here. You're not helping. You're just adding to the confusion. Somebody's asking like a question, you know, we don't need your, uh, that's why I started doing this. What's busted, what works, but round trip latency. That's, that's mm -hmm. how you benchmark an audio interface. That lets you know how fast it is. That is your speed metric. And I, I try to explain to people what it is. And I use Jack Iota, like, lower is better. And I do that with the USB round trip latency, FireWire round trip latency, and of course, PCI Express round trip latency. And I give you the testing setup and everything because it's reproducible. And I like a reproducible build, Jill Bryan. I think that's always a good thing. Not made up numbers, actual data bits that you can take and go, hmm, which yeah. one would be best for real time monitoring? What are the features? Nice. How does it work? And uh, fun times. And you can be like the person who asked me a question yesterday. He was a very polite Windows 10 user. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you always gotta like you, you you worry a little bit i got a question on uh the apogee one usb oh okay audio interface and Petro bought one too and yeah. if you remember that was a kind of fun one because apogee never released uh windows drivers for it and you know linux going to linux right so we just reverse engineered it and it turns out that it only works on linux these days because it doesn't work on the new max yeah. ironically enough and somebody wrote back, he's like, hey, man, you know, I used to have a Mac, and now I got a Windows box, and I still have my Apogee. Can I use it with Windows 10? And I wrote back, you know, I wasn't rude. I always try to be, you know, just straightforward. I'm like, hey, man, unfortunately, these do not work on anything but old Macs and new Linux boxes. I'm like, I hit reply. I'm like, I'm going to reply. And this is like, you Linux people are all, burr, 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 burr. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's what I was expecting. I'm like, you know, when you do you, man. And I was like, oh, oh, thanks for taking the time and all that. That's really nice. Cool. And I'm like, nice. Look at oh, that civil nice. conversation. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> helping people out. Speaking of helping people out, 44 weeks in, Jill. 44 <laughs> weeks of playing Trackmania. Yes, I cannot believe it. It's been so fun, and I'm so happy I've been improving. <laughs> I would I would think so after 44 weeks, right? Right. So, f like with most things, I end up doing as just like, eh, we're, here's the thing I'm going to start doing. If anyone wants to come hang out, um, you're welcome to. It ends up turning into a thing. So, 44 weeks later, I finally set up on our website. Nice. So, if you go under home, we have the Filthy Casuals Track Mania server information. Also, I might have been gotten slightly tired of answering this question over and over and over again. So, this tells you. Hey, if you like physics puzzles with wheels, come hang out with us. We do it every Tuesday <laughs> and Friday. It's got a link to the game where you can buy it. Tells yeah. you how to get into the server. If you're a Twitch sub or a patron, got instructions, hyperlinks. It's got a schedule. On Tuesdays, we do the new maps and practice and time attack. We all get together and we hang out, you know, talk about movies and whatnot. While we're going around 14 new maps each and every week. Fridays, we do a points match. So we all start at the same time and try to race to the very end of the match and we collect points. Person with the most points, the top three, they get free games. And of course, Saturday through Monday, the server is open with all the previous maps, over 200 maps. Got instructions. Mm -hmm. How do you find the server? You just type Linux in. We're the only one. That's how it works. We got our own private server that's set up with sweet, sweet bumping music, despite what other people yeah, might say. I Joe like likes it. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Oh, it's a nice tutorial too, How to get Ben. In. That looks nice. And password. These are all the common yeah. questions. And if you have any <laughs> questions, just drop into our track manias and channel on Discord. But that is there. Now I can just like, hey, sweet. Go <laughs> here. What else do we have? Oh, right. Uh, I talked about danger clicks. If anything happens yeah. during the show, <laughs> it's because of the left micro switch on my Elcom Huge <laughs> has decided to get a little spasticky. I'm waiting for a new one in the mail which is always fun as I was explaining in the pre-show, like these come from Japan. Like there's no English or anything. It's just all Japanese, but they're great and they're low cost. So, you know, replacing like for like with that and a couple of different things I've been trying to get together. I got a, we're talking about prices. I, I got a fun camera hack video in the works right now. I'm getting nice. all the pieces for that. And uh, another AB comparison, because I, I love like value stuff, Jill. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not the biggest fan of what you would call vintage hardware now, am I? Yeah, you have some too, like me. <laughs> Not the biggest but, fan. Although, although all your vintage hardware, you like to to use it and show it off and and show that this it works on Linux. Difference. This yeah. is the difference. Um, not necessarily with me. It's something that I can. What I'm a fan <laughs> of is older hardware that you can still do stuff with. Yeah, that's productive. That, yeah, <laughs> uh, and that that's like one of the things I'm going to be showing off is the difference between. And I, I decided I'm going to use the focus right, you know, the little red interface that everybody buys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it stack up against a focus right from 16 years ago? Mm, performance probably. wise, numbers wise, like you know, what is uh, the EIN number? I mean, what's capture sample rate, noise level, microphone preamps, like for like, and we're going to run it down using focus mm. right's own metrics and measurements. Oh, that'll be nice. Yeah. And I think you're going to be surprised. That's all I'm going to say. 
That's cool. All I'm gonna say. That'll be a great video. I'm looking forward to that. I'm then. Just sitting back and I'm <laughs> waiting to yoink the particular audio interface from that era because we're we're slowly, you know, we've come out of the pandemic and people have realized, like, wait a minute, I'm not going to get three times the price for my 20 year old audio interface. Nay, you're not. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I'm patient. I can wait it out, and they're finally ticking back down. And, uh, and of course, I got that camera video I'm working on, too. But we need to get into it. Uh, vanilla OS. Yeah. Do you so like they're... vanilla? <laughs> I love vanilla. Vanilla, I like more vanilla more than chocolate, then. What if I gave so... you a handful of chocolate beans or vanilla beans? Which one would you chew on? Uh, vanilla. Vanilla? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> vanilla, I absolutely. <laughs> I tell you to get away from me with your handfuls of beans. Oh. Like, ah. No. I like jelly, vanilla jelly beans, too. <laughs> um, like, I like cinnamon sticks. I like the idea of cinnamon sticks. I've nibbled on a cinnamon stick. I'm like, like a real cinnamon stick. I'm not talking about like whatever <laughs> candy version of cinnamon sticks are. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm like, dip it in some tea. I'm like, all right, I get oh, it. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> that works, Ben. Yeah, so there is a new Ubuntu-based distro being developed. And it isn't your typical Ubuntu. Yes, it's called Vanilla OS. And on the Vanilla OS GitHub page, it states, taste the GNOME vanilla experience on Ubuntu with some spicy. <laughs> Ooh. And yeah, this, this uh, distro is does have some spice. Ubuntu based distro. <gasps> <laughs> but this one does have spice. So not only does it have stock, a stock GNOME experience, but it is an on demand, immutable distribution. Yeah, the system is read-only to prevent unwanted changes and corruption from third-party applications or now, faulty... That's something that you can update. switch on and off, right? Yes, correct. And some paths, paths are, of course, still writable, such as your home directory, of course. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's really awesome. It's called Vanilla because it's stock GNOME and it's immutable. And another cool thing about it is it allows you to choose and enable flat pack snaps or app images um, with its first time setup after installation. And that's pretty cool. I haven't seen any other distro do that yet. <laughs> so it's, it's really wonderful. And there's even a new package manager called APX, which allows you to install packages inside a managed container by default. Pretty, pretty sweet. And unfortunately, the ISO is not publicly available yet. It, it will be sometime soon. But right now, you can download the ISO by joining its Discord channel for now, which hmm. is linked in the show notes. Pretty interesting. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, Vanilla OS is what I call a Yao, yet another Ubuntu. Yes. <laughs> this one is special. <laughs> it is, you know. You know, being able to make sure like all of the desktop containerization options like that screen. Let's see. Can I scroll back up to that screen? Let's take a look at it. Where's that? It's like a nice little, nice yeah. little checkbox you see there. Package manager is like choose one or more packet. It makes it easy to disable all of them. Yes. Out of the box. Make sure. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. one of the things uh, I enjoy about Debian because it doesn't have any of them to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good thing. Then again. It does have its own uh, Joey APX, which is its own package manager, right? Yes. Pretty sweet. <laughs> now, you know, I love seeing a new package manager. That's always good. However, it's like its own APX itself is its own containerization thing on top of everything else. Yeah. And that's what's unique about this package manager. You know, this is this is good for deploying in, in for businesses and server side. And I think this, this OS Kinda has like lots snaps. of uses. Yeah, yeah. And flat packs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm getting. It's always good. We, you call it fragmentation. I call it options. That's how I look exactly. at all of this. Uh, the on-demand immuta eh, immutability, immutability, immutability. Grandpa, I, see. <laughs> ah. I said it wrong. Immutability. <laughs> <laughs> it's contagious, isn't it? Um, yes, it is. <laughs> it does sound neat. Like if you can come up with a use case for it. <laughs> like I'd be curious yeah. right in let, let me know I mean like if you're going to be setting like a kiosk mode or something like that maybe yeah and you don't Perfect want to mess around with it or you know you, you can uh, set it up on your friend's laptop and don't tell them about it and <laughs> change it every now and then you know just <laughs> yes <laughs> 
Be like, hey, <laughs> how, how you doing? You could, you could, you could change it from uh, from using snaps to flat packs, or uh, just just uh, let them use uh, app images, which is my preferred way of containerization. <laughs> I think so. app images are um, try before you buy with me. You know it. It, it is. It's it's kind of how we demo our um, like the latest version of Caden Live. For you just want to see, We're like, yeah. hey, let's see what this yeah. is going on. Let's see what this is about because I'm. I, mean, I don't install want to install the binary like flat pack or snap yeah. or anything like that. I don't want even. I don't even need that system in place because again, I'm still. I'm not even on the fence. I'm on the other side of the fence. I'm like, explain yeah. to me again how containerization of the desktop makes. Like, show me where that's a problem <laughs> that yeah. needs fixing. Um, and again, I'm old cantankerous and stuck in my ways. That's fine. Yeah, I you like my, my dot debs. <laughs> so uh, you also like ginormous pink laptops. Yes, I, I sure do. <laughs> so we're going to talk about M Control Center. It's a free and open source uh, Linux application that allows you to change the settings of MSI laptops, including a battery mode to adjust between four levels of performance and battery life, starting from high performance to lowering the power consumption for basic needs. You can also change other settings such as the keyboard backlight mode. Um, you could adjust, um, adjust it to turn on and off at a certain time. And it has a USB power share mode and uh, turning on and off of the webcam. It also has, which, which is another cool thing, has a CPU and GPU temperature display and shows you fan speeds as well. And OMG, I was so happy when Ven put this in the show notes. This awesome software is coming in handy for me with my MSI prestige 14 inch ultra hd pink laptop it's actually a, a fairly new uh, laptop i got it over the pandemic it's a 10th gen core i7 with 16 gigabytes of ram and has both an onboard intel igpu and a discrete nvidia geforce gtx 1650 max q gpu that i switched between with prime run and uh, the battery, unfortunately. We were talking the... about that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> having Prime on a laptop is a blessing and a curse. It, it is. It is. But thank go gosh for uh, Optimus software running on Linux now. And some distros do it very well, like Arch Linux, which I have right on. I have it. Have Arch on this machine right now. And uh, Fedora does nice with it. And Ubuntu will play nice with it with, with some work. But the battery management in Linux on this laptop is not that great. And, um, you know, the M Control Center addresses and fixes a lot of the issues. So, well, it's got right, a couple of options in it, which is it sure does. pretty nice to have, you know, between your high performance, your balance, your silence, and of course, the thing they like to call <laughs> super battery, which, you know, that's just going to lower all of your. I mean, I, I guess maybe doing some testing. The reason I ran across this application mm -hmm. is because earlier this week, a friend was like, hey, I got an MSI laptop. My battery is always dying. How do I control yes. everything? So what did I do? I went to Google and I typed in MSI Linux laptop and this yeah. came up. And I'm like, and hmm, have up. we talked about this before? And I did a search on the site. I'm like, no, we haven't. No. So, uh -uh. Now, I do want to point out that this app only works, has been confirmed to work, I should say. That, that's the right way of saying it. On certain MSI laptops. Seven. Yeah. MSI <laughs> laptops. There's a couple of variations. And uh, what I do want to point out is a couple of things have changed in this is version 3.0, which is yeah. five days ago. A couple of optimizations, uh, saving and restoring your settings. So you kind of got profiles, application icons really now in nice. the system tray. And you can set your battery charge limit from 30 to 100%, which is neat. But yeah, go check out uh, Jill. You have a mm -hmm. what, what type of uh, msi what model was that the msi prestige uh the optimus version okay um, yeah msi prestige uh 14 inch and uh it it uh was the 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 number uh there's a couple of different numbers in this series and MSI, mine was, they have yeah. one prestige on here with the 14 evo but immediately after the show jill is going to tell them <laughs> that she can confirm and some things yeah. don't work though like yeah uh, the webcam versions. yeah yeah u.s power share is not f available on that uh, prestige well this prestige Correct. model 
webcam yeah. um, function super keyboard. Uh, what is anything? Oh yeah, the Summit E16 gets all green and uh, yeah, I guess nice. the E16. That's better than nothing, right? Yeah. Well, it, the other thing about this that's so nice is on Windows you have full control with their um, MSI Dragon, you know, mm -hmm. software center, and it's so nice that we have people in the community, you know, developing one for Linux. There's another one called MSI Dragon for Linux, but it 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 doesn't seem to be very active. Uh, mm. But this one is the most flushed out, and you know has all the awesome utilities that I've been wanting because yeah, the battery dies so quickly on this with Linux, and so I'm really looking forward to testing the software long term to see how much battery life I actually do save. So Keep it. I'm pretty <laughs> happy. In, right. Yes. <laughs> That's good to have. Something yeah. I wrapped up, I think the day after the show, last week's episode is an interfacing Linux. I like to find out what audio stuff does and does not work under Linux and have a very factual, no nonsense, no flare, no buzz thing like, hey, this thing does work here. So you get it up and running. And, you know, that's the end of our, our conversation, our relationship. It's not like, mm -hmm. so I'm going to tell you about this. But first, let me tell you about I what see. I had for breakfast. I'm like, no, I just <laughs> want to know why is your video 25 minutes long? Like, let's see if we can get it down to about 10. <laughs> Very excited. This is the cool thing I've been playing around with. This is a Tascam US 1608. And Tascam, they've been in the business making recording gear for 50 plus years. They know what they do. Now, most of their stuff is professional, like professional recorders. That normally what you would think about Tascam is like portable recording devices, but they've been making interfaces for quite a while. And, you know, this is more of a prosumer device, but it's priced like a consumer device. And um, 16 physical inputs, which is insane. Normally on an audio recording interface, mm -hmm. you might have, you know, two, four, six, eight, Eight's usually where it tops out. You can hook in a light pipe and, you know, eight add expansion and get eight more. No, this thing's got like 16 inputs. It's got hardware MIDI on the back. And yes, it's USB. It's not FireWire, so you don't have to worry about that. What got my attention is this guy has support baked into the Linux kernel. Like, it's there. Why? Because you could run this. It's got a built-in DSP. It's got brains, Jill. It's got intelligence. You wow. can set routing. It's got equalizers built in. It's got compression built in. Stereo pair matching, panning, everything that you would normally have on a mixer is all done digitally. And it's portable too. You can set this up, program it, unplug it, and cut it on. It's going to mm -hmm. operate just the same. That really impressed me. So I walk you through how to get this set up, how to get it plugged in, and how to play around with it. And, you know, of course, we go over the round trip latency and all the other fun things, which I'm happy to report. This guy is the fastest USB interface I have. Nice which I think is pretty nice. And of course, you know, I go through the thing. I'm like, hey, oh, by the way, if you're going to take this thing apart, <laughs> Tascam, this is the most over-engineered piece of equipment I've ever disassembled in recent memory. Oh, this is the one with lots of screws. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is like 24 <laughs> screws <laughs> yeah. to get the lid off that. And just to get to that point, what we're seeing on the video is just to slide the lid off. Like I... I had to start organizing them. Typically, to give you an idea, if you take stuff apart, you know, you're taking apart like a, you know, rack-mounted interface, four, maybe six screws, 20 plus mm -hmm. screws. <laughs> Got it apart because I wanted to take a look on the inside, just make sure there weren't any bad caps. This is the reason I think this came out in like 2014-ish, and I mean, it's still made today. There's the DSP module right there, that little mm. daughter board sitting on top. That's yeah. got all the... Uh, who made that? I have zoom and enhance. I didn't do that. Uh, analog devices. So oh, Blackfin. okay. Yeah. Um, you know, everything's good. It's completely workable, completely serviceable. But getting that lid back on, I'm not exaggerating, took me over three hours. <laughs> well, I guess they, they made it to withstand uh, you being able to stack about 50 of these on top of each other. If they weren't in a rack, you could stack them. It's a solid steel <laughs> case. Yeah. The, like Just the old sun computers <laughs> to help everyone out if you're ever sliding that case back on sliding and you're fine you're like Shroom. but it's, it's stuck on something it was stuck on something door i had to take it out i, I like took it oh, and put wow. it under the kitchen table and brought an extra lighting yeah to like what is going on and i'm <laughs> sitting there all alone and like dink 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 flipping <laughs> it like this was frustrating i mean you know, of course you don't want to like do that because you'll break something it's a good thing i didn't 
It's mm-hmm. all of the quarter inch jacks in the back have to be perfectly aligned, aligned. at different yeah. points of pushing it in. Oh, wow. It, it's not straightforward. Like I, after I get it in, I'm like, oh, it was one of those. Have you ever had that happen? You get done and you finally get it. And you're like, really? That was it? Yes. 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 Really? yes. It's like taking apart and putting together laptops, which I've like, done man. quite a bit. <laughs> and, you know, the frustrating thing is, you know, even, even during that process of putting it back together, I'm like, I have this on tape, kids. I came back like, like let's roll the back of the tape as I'm taking this thing apart. And I'm like, wow. No, I'm not missing anything. But it was all those jacks that you had to push at the top and align some, then at the bottom, then realign the other because it's kind of sitting on a board that was real flexible. Mm-hmm. And that mm. was it. And I got it back together. Then I took it apart again just to make sure because what I found when I was scrubbing through that video, Jill, was mm-hmm. a ribbon cable that wasn't plugged in all the way. Oh, no. So after oh, no. I got everything plugged in, packaged up, put it back yeah. in the box, went into the storage room, <laughs> slid it on the shelf next to the other audio interfaces, went and chilled out, did something that afternoon. I'm like, all right, let's go back over this footage. And uh, I saw it. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Oh, no. Oh, you no. Gotta you got to open it me. all, do it all over again. No, no, no. <laughs> A sane person would have been, oh, well, it still works. Not me. Uh-uh. <laughs> I didn't last. I lasted maybe 45 minutes. I'm like, I'm just not going to mess gotta with it. got to fix it. Like, yeah. Oh, there I was taking those screws back out again. That's how I had yeah. an exact count of them. So yeah, if you're looking to get it, uh, Tascam, all of this is on the website. The also mixer, again, all of this stuff's built into the kernel too. There's 280. This is why it has a mixer. Now you can access it through the also mixer, but you have 280 options scrolling to the right. Yeah. <laughs> I was noticing that then on the, the video, how, how much you had to scroll through all the audio holes and now some mixer. And I'm like, it just never ends. <laughs> and of course, if you want to use it as a sound card, it works under Pulse Audio, which means it's going to work under Pipewire. And there's the mixer with all the individual elements. Setting it up is real easy. I want to thank our theorem. Uh Actually, you know what? Blame our theorem if the arch directions don't work. Uh, mm-hmm. 100% on him. Yeah, you set up the GitHub, compile it. Compiling's not scary, kids. Don't worry about it. And of course, round trip latency, testing setup, and you know, pros and cons. I really liked it uh, for the price because you can get these for, you know, like new about three three fifty. So if you're in the market and you're nice. looking for a particular piece of kit and that fits all of that, because this thing's very basic. It's just a big block of metal designed to record sixteen inputs, and it's got that DSP built in. What I'd really love to have mm-hmm. though, I say this in the video, is that if it had had a noise gate. Or downward mm. expander on it okay because it's already got the eq you already got the compression and everyone's looking for that device that they can just plug in and have your eq compression but if you also had the noise gate built in it'd be great for streaming yeah you wouldn't need anything additional an extra piece of All hardware right. yeah the mm-hmm. infuriating thing is is i have a device that does exactly that brand new in box and i've had it for months it just doesn't work with linux yet Mm, okay. <laughs> but we're working on it on the also kernel mailing list, so stay tuned. Speaking of Linux Gamecast, that's a great place that you can go to help support us. We got a support button, Patreon, merch, PayPal, wish list, and all the other fun stuff. What do I have? Speaking of merch, Frank's back. Frank's back in the store, kids. Store.linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> for just in time for, for October. Yep. <laughs> no. Frank is here. <laughs> available in uh, the Frank 1999 series. I redid this this week. He's available in pretty much everything. Poster, plastic pullover, hoodies, premium pullovers. And the one thing that I really like is it on this page. It might be on the next page. Uh, there's also an option for like a zip up, which is really good. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. A zip up hoodie. It's going to load eventually. Nice. And there you go. You get your <laughs> Frank file on. Nice little hoodie. And I've updated our back logo. I don't know if the people oh, nice. at home can read that. Yeah. It's got LinuxGameCast.com. So go check that out. Available in sizes up to 2XL with, of course, we got our Hell Elks and our chairs and our stickers. But yeah, all this stuff is reasonably priced too because, hey, yeah. if you're going to like advertise for us, I'm not going to try to rip you off and everything's good quality. Now, speaking mm-hmm. of things that might be of questionable quality, Bill's got a <laughs> wish list. Rainbow penguin plushies. <laughs> oh man, uh, there, it is. I added a few new things in there. I have a, a keyboard, uh, uh, a stand to show off some of my cool keyboards it's a in my collection. Of blinking vomit creatures. And uh, lots of RGB plush penguin penguins. LEDs. Yes. 
<laughs> Penguins that I don't have in my huge collection behind me. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> like, hopefully none of those require that new 12-volt uh, high-power connector to charge. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah <laughs> that's uh, that's been a mess with um but yeah if you pick up anything from the our uh wish list uh mm -hmm. you get to send in a little note and we'll read it usually like try to keep it like nc17 or below i have one for the studio it's uh do i do i have anything that blinks on the one for the studio um uh, you know that technically is gonna have a hard drive led <laughs> so yeah I guess it would blink oh that dumb thing i'm not all right see i love you guys guys and girls i'm eventually going to pick that go xlr thing up and immediately mm -hmm. give it away but somebody's reverse engineering it and that's why i'm kind of interested in it that's uh that see this is how you know you're getting nice. it used to be the focus right was the youtuber special Joel. that's yeah that, that's what everyone was using yeah <laughs> this is the new thing the go xlr it's kind of like the twitch the live streamer special because it's got a bleep yeah. button built into it even Linus, the squeaky one, has one. <laughs> Linus, I don't, I don't think you're squeaky, <laughs> Linus. <laughs> oh, don't not that Linus. Her. Not Linus Torvalds. <laughs> Linus Sebastian, who I love, and I love his videos. Linus Tech Tips. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. People might get spicy about that. I don't oh, know. like I don't like, <laughs> like man. Listen, somebody's talking about tech. Like, how can you just like have a parasocial relationship and dislike a person, right? Like, no. I don't know this person. No, like, nobody right. produces, has good content. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, also, become a patron, patreon.com forward slash Linux Teamcast. We got a bunch of crazy tiers with bonus rewards, among other things, up to and including access to our super secret Discord that we hang out in. It was fun. We had a couple of new people this week that popped in, which is always fun. You're like, hello? Yes. And everybody's like, Whoa. Like, what's going on? Uh, we got about 80, 90 people hanging out there, chilling out, and that's fun. Yeah. And everyone's like, wait, this is where you guys hang out? Like, yeah, we're just in there hanging out. Who do we have? Uh, two new patrons, right? Yeah. So we have uh, Jalad, uh, named after the, the famous Star Trek episode called Darmok. So Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. Tanagra with um, <laughs> shoes Shaka off. when the walls fell. <laughs> that was the, the, the second episode of the fifth episode. Fifth season, episode number 102. How do I know these things <laughs> of next gen? <laughs> Crippling depression. I don't know. Yeah, I... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Biatko? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Biatko, a new patron. Yeah. I, I haven't seen him or her in our Discord yet. But, um, um and of course tree sloth popped in uh yeah. twitch subscriber twitch yeah. uh because uh we're doing the track mania things and that no, listen that's a completely valid cause we have a dedicated room just for the track mania stuff like Psst, yo yeah and he's a long reason? long time listener of the show and wanted to come in and, and play track mania with us so cool so he joined us uh, uh yesterday and that was a lot of fun mm -hmm. i mean i like it when people like do it seamlessly. I'm always surprised because so many times, so many times I'm like, all right, how do I get into Discord? I'm like, yeah, you do a Twitch sub or, you know, what you're like crazy cheap. <laughs> this is a very bad, bad plan to try to get rich kids. Um, it's because it's not. It's just to keep the like crazy mat. How, how chill is our Discord? We don't have to deal with like trolls or anything. No, we have wonderful people in there. Occasionally we get a troll, but it's not from our Discord, it's from Twitch. <laughs> It'll be like, so. like with our live chat, right? Yeah, it's our never, live chat. Like, yeah. Everybody's just like, chill. Why? Because like, even if it's like one cent, that gets rid of like 99% of those people who are just like, because trolls are lazy. Exactly. Right. Yeah. We don't have any of that. And we have Windows mm -hmm. users. It's not like exclusive. We get our Windows buddies in yeah. there. And um, it's great. Everybody gets along. It's copacetic. But uh, no, when you tell people like, when you do the Discord Twitch integration, I always expect like I'm going to be at this for like the next two or three days. Or, like, well, how do I do this? And that's not Tree Sloth. Tree's like, got it done. Boom, pop right in. I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I like <laughs> to see. Yes. <laughs> now, something else I'd like to see, Jill. You know what, what that is? Ben? Raspberry uh, Pi four something. eight gigs on shelves available to buy. Ah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and I haven't seen that for years. Well, okay. Without a two hundred dollar price tag, yeah, that's something that's uh, few and far between at the moment. <laughs> we looked that up on um, yeah <laughs> Saturday on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Like 
Yes, $190, $200 for an 8 gig Raspberry 4. And why are we on Amazon? Because they're out of stock everywhere else. Yeah. Which brings me to our next little bit of story. The Odroid H3 Plus. It's oh, beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Looks neat. It's pie-sized, right? It's pretty decent. Yeah. It's a quad-core Jasper Lake X86 processor. Not the fastest thing in the world, but it's faster than Raspberry 4. Mm-hmm. X86, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. Not one, but two of those. NVMe and SATA support. HDMI and Display Port out. Yeah. <laughs> now, it doesn't come with any memory, but it uses SODIMS DDR4, which I, I was like, okay, that's pretty neat. You slap a little case on it. That'd be great. Now, why why am uh, I'm interested in oh let me tell you why I'm in. Oh look, it's got, even got little sound holes on the back. Yes, it sure does. A, and yeah. it's got spit of optical out. On top I know. Of that, I so was right? impressed, like, Ben. <laughs> Not just 3.5, but spit of, and you can do audio out with uh with display port and HDMI. So you have exactly. four ways to get audio out. <laughs> and look at that, it's got a nice little NVMe in the bottom. <laughs> and okay. It's $165. Yeah. That's where mm-hmm. it gets interesting because not this is what happens when something is out of stock. Like this, this is just an amazing deal and it's in stock and I'm totally going to buy one probably like next month to get around to playing around with it. I mean, it just uses a standard, it's got USB three, USB two, of course, power switch. You can get active cooling. By the way, this thing is a monster emulation system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was Easily watching that done. video. It was pretty yeah. impressive. <laughs> I, and I added this up. Even if you slap like eight gigs of RAM on this thing at 165 bucks, uh, you're still under the price of $200 Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig. And this thing will run circles around it. And it's x86, so you're not dealing with a, you, you know, because when you're looking at like single board computers, you're thinking, you know, if you're like me, you've been looking for something that was in stock, right? You know, ARM, something with eight gigs, preferably. And you might look like Orange Pie or some other places like that. And you're always like, well, how? Because everybody pretty much has to maintain their own little distribution for maximum compatibility. Yeah, yeah. And this, you can just sling anything on it. On. Yeah, and That's like it, x86. Right. Yeah. Done. <laughs> mm. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, uh, they got some pretty neat, neat cases. Cases are like $10 for this guy, too. Yeah. Uh, RAM. Uh, and- the power supply was is just an additional nine dollars and forty cents, so that's inexpensive enough. And I'm I'm really glad they're including a really beefy heat sink to cool um, the SOC because the you Look know X eighty six processors do run hot. It looks like a power supply, doesn't it? I know it does. Yeah, <laughs> a little miniature, and that's the case too. It's like ten dollars for the case too. I mean, are you kidding me? Like, it does. It's like you could, you know what? You could hide it in a computer. You could put it next to your real power supply in the computer. <laughs> oh, my God. I'd be done with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could have two. You could have this little SOC in your computer. <laughs> your main yeah, system. I, yeah. I I don't have an excuse in me. I'm always looking for an excuse not <laughs> to spend money. And I don't know. Yeah. Like, this thing's just... Smack me down every time I try to come up with like, no, this is, this is perfect. Here's what I've been wanting. You, you've heard me say this before. It is mm-hmm. below my feet, down here. To power these two devices plus the Discord when we bring in guests, there's three more PCs. And, you know, they're low-end business PCs. They're like Dell 3010s and an HP whatever sort by lowest. Mm-hmm. And they're i7s, you know, ancient i7s, 8 gigs of RAM. I want something small because, you know, it's a lot of force got three of these guys and i'd like to add more but the problem is that's a whole new pc you gotta wire it in with a keyboard and mouse and all that with the monitors i want like a row of these guys like just zip tied to the back of the desk under there yeah there you go right yeah and just have and they'd be way more powerful so yeah 65 bucks I, I think i'm gonna drop like 200 dollars and buy i'm not gonna like try to kit one out or anything it'll be a fun video maybe uh maybe next month maybe in the december i'll put on an ugly christmas sweater it's like old man versus sbc yeah yeah i was impressed with how many ports this has i mean this has more ports than any other soc i've seen at that that, price too because you see something like this if we got down to the yeah the real expensive ones like we looked at like the bill of material we looked at that we got down at the price and it was like 495 and like yeah yeah right (laughs) and like we've seen things like this what the the shocker is like the price 200 bucks yeah okay (laughs) <laughs> and it, it's not like we have a option 
be with a Raspberry Pi right now because those mm-hmm. are over two hundred dollars just to get a bare board. Yeah. I want one. That's all I gotta uh, say. Hardware shortages. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation, you know, they've come out and they said, I'm not, I'm not slagging off on them, but you know, they're like, Hey, we got to take care of our, uh, industrial yeah, business industrial partners business first. Partners. I'm like yeah. organization, right? Got yeah. it. Uh, people for no <laughs> companies first. Yeah. Maybe free up some of that supply. Maybe the Raspberry Pi Pi five will be another exciting thing. Yes. So we're running along. We got to bounce okay. out of here. Did we get any famous last words? Ah. Uh, Go out there and make some penguins happy. <laughs> Have some credits. Do all the Linux things. <laughs> multiple Linux things. Yeah, multiple Install Linux things. Install seven Linux. Yes. And go on Twitter and post Install your... Install uh, vanilla OS. And thank you to our advisors, Omegas and Artharin. <laughs> Executive producers, Rob Rent, Scott, Atomic, and Mike, Empty, Drummer7, Koaku, Pebble, and I missed the last one. Abstraction Super Death Stoat for Chicago, bringing yeah. it in, along with our sea monsters. <laughs> uh, Treggy, Mark, Diaz, and G. Joe. <laughs> Plenty of death notes. Death I even notes. got Jalad. Yeah, in. Jalad's in there. Good luck. Okay. Get a magnifying glass. <laughs> yes, I can't read that. All of a <laughs> beautiful small. trailer. And Episode have... <laughs> 350. Aw, we have Close my brother enough. in the house in chat, and... Jill is fascinated by people in houses. I don't understand it, but I say if it makes you happy. Yes. Go for it. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Good night, all. Love you.